take the gloves we know will do for so. If upon her train she stumbled, what was train comes always treading. If the hair is rather tumbled, so to me a pretty lady, such a pretty, pretty lady, such a very, very pretty lady. to dethrone the Grand Duke, a conspiracy in which the members of this company are deeply involved, I am invited to the marriage of two of its members. I present myself in due course, and I find not only that the ceremony has taken place, which is not of the least consequence, but the wedding breakfast is half eaten, which is a consideration of the most serious importance. But the ceremony has not taken place. We can't get a parson. Can't get a parson? Well, how's that the three a penny? Oh, it's the old story. The Grand Duke. Oh. Mm. It seems that the little imp has selected this, our wedding day, for a convocation of all the clergy in the town to settle the details of his approaching marriage to the enormously wealthy Baroness von Krakenfeld. And there won't be a parson to be had for love or money until six o'clock this evening. And as we produce our magnificent classical revival of Troilus and Cressida tonight at seven, <laughs> we have no alternative but to eat our wedding breakfast before we've earned it. So sit down and make the best of it. I should like to pull his grand duke's for him. That I should. He's the meanest, the cruelest, and the most spiteful ape in all Christendom. Well, we shall soon be free from this tyranny. Tomorrow the despot is to be dethroned. Hush! <laughs> Fresh girl, you know not what you 
say? Don't be absurd. We're all in it. We're all tiled here. Uh, th th that has nothing to do with it. Know ye not that in alluding to our conspiracy without having first given and received the secret sign, you are violating a fundamental principle of our association? By the mystic regulation of our dark association, ere you open conversation with another kindred soul, you must eat a sausage roll. You must eat a sausage roll, a sausage roll. Turn, he eats another, that's a sign that he's a brother. Each may fully trust the other. It is quaint and it is droll, but it's bilious on the whole. Very bilious, very bilious on the whole. It's a greasy kind of pasty, which perhaps a judgment hasty might consider rather tasty. Once to speak without disguise, it's found favor in our eyes. It's found favor, it's found favor in our eyes. But when you've been six months feeding, as we have on this sex eating, bilious food is no ill reading. In fact, these repulsive surprise our offended gorgeous rules. without a shudder. But I am a conscientious conspirator. And if you won't give the sign, I will. Oh. Poor Martyr. He's always at it, and it's a wonder where he puts it. Well now, about Troilus and Cressida. <laughs> what do you play? <coughs> if you'll be so obliging as to wait until I've got rid of this feeling of warm oil that's at the bottom of my throat, I'll tell you all about it. Thank you, my love. <coughs> it's gone. Uh, ah, well, the piece will be produced upon a scale of unexampled magnificence. It is confidently predicted that my appearance as King Agamemnon in a Louis XIV wig will mark an epoch in the theatrical annals of Fennec of Fennec. <laughs> I endeavoured to persuade Ernest Doomkopf, our manager, to lend us the classical dresses for our marriage. Think of the effect of a real Athenian wedding procession cavorting through the streets of spacious Al. Torches burning, cymbals banging, flutes tootling, cithari twanging, and a throng of 50 lovely Spartan virgins capering before us all down the high street singing, Eloia, Eloia, a pomponet, Eloia! It would have been tremendous. <laughs> and he declined? He did. On the prosaic ground that it might rain and the ancient Greeks didn't carry umbrellas. <sighs> if, as is confidently expected, Ernest Doomkopf is elected to succeed at the dethroned one. Mark my words, he will make a mess of it. He's sure to be elected. His entire company has promised to plump for him, on the understanding that all the places about the court are filled by members of his troop, according to professional precedents. I think he'd make a lovely grand duke. Oh, how he'll stage manage the processions. <laughs> <laughs> and want to make Julia Jellico jealous. <laughs> that Englishwoman has always rejected his advances hitherto. But now I fancy that the tables will be turned and he'll reject hers. <laughs> that pretentious little London cockney. There is nobody good enough for her. Bah! 
and it's the stick, the very stick. And what a part it is. What a chance for an actor who is really a master of state resource. Why, the Grand Duke of Fennec, Carl Fennec, might have a different makeup for every day of the week. Monday, touch and go light comedy in lavender trousers and a flaxen wig. <laughs> Tuesday, irritable art uncle from India. Wednesday, heavy philanthropist with benevolent bald. Thursday, incisive baronet with diamond ring and cigarette to show it off. <laughs> Friday, <gasps> slimy solicitor with club foot and spectacles. Saturday, <laughs> escaped convict with one eye and a gulp. <laughs> it's one of those parts that can really give a man a chance. Catherine, it's still cough now. We shall know all about it. Well, what's the news? How's the election going? Oh, it's a certainty, a practical certainty. Two of the candidates have been arrested for debt, and the third is a baby in arms. So if you keep your promises and vote solid, I'm cocksure of election. Trust oh. us, but do you remember the conditions? Oh, yes. All of you shall be provided for, for life. Every man shall be ennobled. Every lady shall have unlimited credit at the court millions. Oh, and all salaries shall be paid weekly, in advance. Oh, oh it's certain he knows how to rule the Grand Duchy. Rule a Grand Duchy? Why, oh, my good girl, for ten years past I've ruled a theatrical company. A man who can do that can rule anything. <laughs> King in very truth, and had a son, a guileless youth, in probable succession. To teach him patience, teach him tact, how promptly in a fix to act, he should adopt in point of fact a manager's profession. To that condition he should stoop, despite a twofold mother, with eight or ten stars in his troop, or jealous of each other, or jealous of each other. Oh, the man who can rule a theatrical group, each member a genius and some of them too, and manage to humor the early and late, can govern this company's day. Oh, the man who can rule a theatrical group, each member a genius and some of them too. They say they'll be all right at night. They both could go to school yet. C in each act must change her dress. D will attempt to square the press. He won't play Romeo unless his grandmother plays Juliet. F claims all voidants as her right. She's played them 30 seasons. And G must show herself in tights for two convincing reasons. To very well shape Oh, the man who can serve a theatrical group With painters and ladies and not a sympathy Can govern and rule with a wave of his feet All Europe with iron money Oh, the man who can serve a theatrical team Indeed. Why, instead of playing Troilus of Troy for a month, I shall play Grand Duke of Fenning, Hope Fenning, oh, for a lifetime. Oh, yet am I happy? No, far from happy. Oh, the lovely English comedian, the beautiful Julia, one whose dramatic ability is so overwhelming that our audiences forgive even her strong English accent. Oh, that rare and radiant being treats my respectful advances with disdain unutterable. Oh, and yet, who knows? <laughs> she is haughty and ambitious, and it may be that the splendid change in my fortunes may work a corresponding change in her feelings towards me. Herr Duke, avert, monsieur, at your place. 
beautiful English maid. No, compliments, I beg. I desire to speak with you on a purely professional matter. So we will, if you please, dispense with allusions to my personal appearance, which can only tend to widen the breach which already exists between us. Oh, my only hope shattered. The haughty Londoner still despises me. Oh, it shall be as you will. I understand that the conspiracy in which we are all concerned is to develop tomorrow, and that the company is likely to elect you to the throne. On the understanding that the posts about the court are to be filled by members of your theatrical troupe, according to their professional importance. Well, that is so. Well, then all I can say is that it places me in an extremely awkward position. Oh, I don't see how it concerns you. Why? Bless my heart, don't you see that as your leading lady, I am bound under a serious penalty to play the leading part in all of your productions. Well? Why, of course, the leading part in this production will be the Grand Duchess. Oh, my wife. <sighs> that is another way of expressing the same idea. Oh, I scarcely dare even hope for this. Of course, as your leading lady, you'll be mean enough to hold me to the terms of my agreement. Oh, oh no, no. that is so like a man. <laughs> well, I suppose there's no help for it. I shall have to do it. She's mine. <laughs> but uh, do you think you'd really care to play that part? Care to play it? Oh, certainly not. But what am I to do? Business is business, and I am bound by the terms of my agreement. It's for a long run, mind. A run that may last many, many years. No understudies. And once embarked upon, there's no throwing it up. No, we're used to these long runs in England. They are the curse of the stage. Oh. But you see, I've no option. Do you think the part of the Grand Duchess would be good enough for you? Mm, I think so. It's a very good part in Gerolstein, and not to be a bad one in Fennec. Fennec. Why? What did you suppose I was going to play? But considering your strong personal dislike to me and well, your persistent rejection of my repeated offers, would you find it difficult to throw yourself into the role with all the impassioned enthusiasm that the character seems to demand? Remember, it's a strongly emotional part involving long and repeated scenes of rapture, tenderness, adoration, devotion, all in luxuriant excess, and all of the most demonstrative description. My good sir, throughout my career, I have made it a rule never to allow private feeling to interfere with my professional duties. You may be quite sure that, however distasteful the part may be, if I undertake it, I shall consider myself professionally bound to throw myself into it. This all is the order at my command. I'm the happiest fellow alive. <laughs> oh, now, would you have any objection to give me a, an idea? If it's even a mere sketch of how you would play it. Oh, it would be really interesting for me to know your uh, conception of the part of my wife. How would I play it? Hmm. Now, let me see. Let me see. <gasps> I have it! Oh. <laughs> How would I place his part? The grand duke's bride. All right, in my heart. I do Thank you. 
chaos that made us you succeed. I'd pinch the bow with jade, I would indeed. A this jealous frenzy agitated. It would, of course, be simulated. I'd make a this should never be created. I'd make a this should never be created. I'd make a this should never be created. Did any other may miss you succeed? And should there come to me some summer's hands in all the childish glee? Thinks I, this gentleman, may have belongs to our association. But on the whole, uncertain, yet a sausage roll I took and ate. That chap replied, I don't embellish my eating three with obvious relish. My gracious, my gracious, my gracious, my gracious. Stranger chuckled much as though he thought we had the entertaining. I told him all both bad and good. I bade him go, he said he would. I added much the more I buckled the more that chuckly chubby chuckled. Oh, that could say, oh, that could say, oh, that could say, oh, that could say, oh, When suddenly, as still he squealed, flashed on me that I'd revealed our plot with all details effective <gasps> to Grand Duke Rudolph's own detective. What now to go and tell? What body?
Drake's private detective of all men to make a confidant of. When you come to think of it, it's really devilish funny. When you come to think of it, it's extremely injudicious to admit into a conspiracy every pudding-headed baboon who presents himself. Yes, I should never do that. If I were chairman of this gang, I should hesitate to enroll any baboon who couldn't produce satisfactory credentials from his last zoological gardens. Ludwig is far from being a baboon. Poor boy, he couldn't help giving us away. It's his trusting nature. He was deceived. His trusting nature? Oh, I should like to talk to you in my own language for five minutes. Only food for me, Norton. Oh, I know some good, strong, energetic English remarks that would shrivel your trusting nature into horizons. I'll make you wouldn't understand some. Here we perceive one of the disadvantages of a neglected education. And I suppose you'll never be my Grand Duchess now. Grand Duchess? My good friend, if you don't produce a piece, how can I play as a part? Oh, true. Oh, you see what you've done? But, my dear sir, you don't seem to understand that the man ate three sausage rolls. But keep that fact steadily before you. Three large sausage rolls. Ah! Lots of people eat sausage rolls who are not conspirators. Well, they shouldn't. <laughs> bad form. It's not the game. When one of the human family proposes to eat a sausage roll, it is his duty to ask himself, am I a conspirator? And if, upon examination, he finds he is not a conspirator, he is bound in honour to select some other form of refreshment. Of course he is. One should always play the game. What are you grinning at, you greedy old man? Oh, nothing. Don't mind me. There's nothing more amusing to the legal mind than to see a parcel of laymen bothering themselves about a matter which, to a trained lawyer, presents no difficulty whatever. No, no difficulty. difficulty. None whatever. The way out of it is quite simple. Simple? simple. Certainly. Now attend. In the first place, you two men fight a statutory duel. A statutory duel? A st statutory duel? Oh, what a correct your language this German is. <laughs> Never heard of such a thing. It is true the practice has fallen into abeyance through disuse. But all the laws of Fenig, how Fenig, which are framed upon those of Solon, the Athenian lawgiver, run for a hundred years, when, again like the laws of Solon, they die a natural death, unless in the meantime they have been revived for another century. The act that institutes the statutory duel was passed a hundred years ago. And since it has never been revived, it expires tomorrow, so you're just in time. Oh, but what is the use of talking to us about statutory duels when we none of us know what a statutory duel is? Don't? Well, then I'll explain. About a century since the code of the duello Sudden death or want of rest sent many a strapping fellow, the then presiding prince, who useless bloodshed hated. He passed an act short and compact, which may be briefly stated. Unlike the complicated laws of parliamentary draftsmen, draws, it may be briefly stated. We were the complicated laws of Ingenious law, if any two shall quarrel, they may not fight with falchions bright, which seem to him immoral. But each a card shall draw, and he who draws the lowest shall so twas said be henceforth dead. In fact, a legal goest. When exigence of rhyme compels orthography for goes her spells, and ghost is written go west. With what is meant associate with the bar of orthography as does friend of one's the lowest. When compliments is not by music, legal fiction, and friend and foe have wept their woe, encounter feet affliction. The winner must adopt the loser's correlations and charges it, pay all his debts and take his obligations. The winner must adopt the loser's correlations, discharge his debts, pay all his debts, discharge his debts, pay all his debts, and take his obligations. In short, to briefly sum the case, the winner. Our nation, lawyer, state of haste, our winners.
draws the lowest card, in fact, dies. <laughs> Ipso facto, a social death. He loses all his civil rights. His identity disappears. The revising barrister expunges his name from the list of voters. And the winner takes his place, whatever it may be, discharges all his functions and adopts all his responsibilities. Well, that's all very well as far as it goes, but it only protects one of us. <laughs> What's to become of the survivor? Yes, that's an interesting point, because I might be the survivor. The survivor goes at once to the Grand Duke and in a burst of remorse denounces the dead man as the moving spirit of the plot. He has received his king's evidence and as a matter of course receives a free pardon. The next day, when the law expires, the dead man will, ipso facto, come to life again. The revising barrister will restore his name to the list of voters and he will resume his responsibilities as though nothing unusual had happened. Mm -hmm. But he will advance, be arrested, tried and executed on the evidence of the informer. <laughs> Candidly, my friend, I don't think much of your plot. <laughs> dear, 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 the ignorance of the laity. My good young lady. It is a beautiful maxim of our glorious constitution that a man can only die once. Death expunges crime. And when he comes to life again, it will be with a clean slate. Oh, it's really very ingenious. My dear sir, we owe you our lives. May I kiss him? Certainly not. You're a big girl now. <laughs> well, miscreant, are you prepared to meet me on the field of honor? At once. <laughs> <laughs> By Jove, what a couple of fire eaters we are. He doesn't know what is. Oh, I don't mind this sort of duel. <laughs> oh, it's not like a duel with swords. I hate a duel with mm. swords. It's not the blade I mind, it's the blood. <laughs> and I hate a duel with pistols. Oh. It's not the ball I mind, it's the bang. Oh. <laughs> Altogether a great improvement on the old method of giving satisfaction. Ding, ding, 
fortunes rough. Hurrah, hurrah, I've drawn a king. A king. Here he's drawn a king. Pots and diamonds, spades and pots and pots and diamonds, spades and pots. A strange king, he's drawn a king. A prince and pot with Charles and Beach. Whatever our fate, let's play our parts. <laughs> hurrah, hurrah, I've drawn an ace. An ace! He's drawn an ace! Ace in clubs and diamonds, spades and pots, in clubs and diamonds, spades and pots. He's drawn an ace, I'm 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 drawn an
Christmas of the Marco Call autonomy. I don't indulge in levity or compromising bonomy, but dignified formality consistent with economy. Above all other virtues I particularly prize. I never join in merriment, I don't see joke or jake penny. I never tolerate familiarity in shape penny. This joined with an extravagant respect for tuppence halfpenny. A keynote to my character sufficiently surprised. Observe my snuff box. will not only enjoy the satisfaction of seeing his breakfast devoured by the Grand Ducal pair, he will also be entitled to have the arms of Fennig, Hart Fennig, tattooed between his shoulder blades. The Vice Chamberlain will see to this. All the public fountains of species will run with ginger beer heim and currant vine milk at the public expense. The assistant vice chamberlain will see to this. That night, everybody will illuminate, and as I have no desire to tax the public funds unduly, this will be done at the inhabitants' private expense. The deputy assistant vice chamberlain will see to this. All my grand ducal subjects will wear new clothes, and the sub deputy assistant vice chamberlain will collect the usual commission on all sales. Yeah, wedding presents, which on this occasion should be of a, on a scale of extraordinary generosity, may be left, left at the palace at any hour of the 24. And uh, with this view, the temporary sub-deputy assistant vice-chamberlain will sit up all night for that purpose. <laughs> the entire population will be commanded to enjoy themselves. And with this in mind, the acting temporary sub-deputy assistant vice-chamberlain will sing comic songs in the marketplace from noon till nightfall. <laughs> Finally, we have composed a wedding anthem with which the entire population are required to provide themselves. It can be obtained from the Grand Ducal Publishers at the normal discount price. And all the vice chamberlains will be expected to push the sale. <laughs> I hope I'm not making a mistake in getting married. 
But after all, it's a poor heart that never rejoices. And this wedding of mine is the first little treat I've allowed myself since my christening. <laughs> but besides, Caroline's income is very considerable, and as her ideas of economy are quite on a par with mine, it ought to turn out well. <laughs> Bless her tough old heart, she's a mean little darling. Oh, here she is, punctual to our appointment. Rudolph! Uh, uh, Why, Rudolph, what's the matter? Uh, well, I, I, I'm not quite myself, my pet. I, I, I'm a little worried and upset. I, I want a tonic. It's the low diet, I expect. I'm afraid, after all, I may have to take the bull by the horns and have an egg with my breakfast. Shouldn't do anything rash, dear. Begin with a juju. I'll save it for supper. <laughs> Rudolph, don't! What in the world are you thinking? I was thinking of embracing you, my sugar plum, uh, just as a little cheap treat. What? Here? In public? Really, you appear to have no sense of delicacy. No sense of delicacy, Mama? No, I can't make you out. When you courted me, all your courting was done publicly in the marketplace. When you proposed, you proposed in the marketplace. And now that we're engaged, you seem to desire that our first tete-a-tete shall occur in the marketplace. Surely, you have a room in your palace with blinds. That would do. But my own, I can't help myself. I'm bound by my own decree. Your own decree? Yes. You see, all the houses that give on to the marketplace belong to me, and the drains, which date from the year of Charmaine, want attending to, and uh, the houses wouldn't let. <laughs> so, uh, with a view to increasing the property values, I decreed that all love episodes between affectionate couples should take place in public on this spot every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, <laughs> when the band doesn't play. Bless me, what a happy idea, so moral too. And have you found an answer? An answer? You know, the rents have gone up 50%. <laughs> and the sale of opera glasses, which is a grand ducal monopoly, has received an extraordinary stimulus. So, uh, under the circumstances, would you allow me to put my arm around your waist uh, as a source of income, uh, just the once? But it's so very embarrassing. Think of the opera glasses. My good girl, that's just what I am thinking of. I mean, hang it all, we have to give them something for their money. Oh, what's this? It's a letter which your detective asked me to hand you. I wrapped it in yesterday's newspaper to keep it clean. It's just his report it'll keep. Uh, uh, I say, you've never been and bought a newspaper, have you? Rudolph, do you think I'm mad? It came wrapped round my breakfast. Uh, I thought you were not the sort of girl to go out and buy a newspaper. <laughs> no, well, as we've got it, we may as well read it. What does it say? Uh, why, dearie, here's your biography. Our detested despot. Yes, I, I fancy that refers to me. Uh, and it says, oh, I can't. Yeah, what can't be? It says that although you're going to marry me tomorrow, you were betrothed in infancy to the Princess of Monte Carlo. Yes, that's perfectly right. Uh, didn't I mention it? You will never say a word about it. Uh, well, 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 you see, it doesn't matter because it, it's practically off. Practically off? Yes. Now, you see, under the terms of the agreement, the betrothal is void unless the princess marries before she's of age. Now, her father, the prince, is stony broke and hasn't left his house for years for fear of arrest. Over and over, he has implored me to advance him the money for the princess to come to me, but in vain. Over and over again, he has implored me to come to him to be married, but in vain. Now, as the princess comes of age at two tomorrow, why, at two tomorrow, I am a free man. <laughs> and so... I have appointed that hour for our wedding, but I should like to have as much marriage as I can get for my money. I see. Of course, if the married state is a happy state, it's a pity to waste any. Yes, every hour we delayed, I would lose a lot of you and you'd lose a lot of me. Oh, yeah. my thoughtful darling, oh, Rudolph, we ought to be very happy. Yeah, well, if I'm not, it'll be my first bad investment. <laughs>
<laughs> Mind you, there is such a thing as a slump, even in matrimonials. I often picture us in the long, cold, dark December evenings, sitting close to each other and singing impassioned duets to keep warm, and thinking of all the lovely things we could afford to buy, if we chose to, and planning our lives in the spirit of the most rigid and exacting economy. It is the most beautiful and touching picture of connubial bliss in its highest and most rarefied development. <laughs> Once a year. You are an open handed dear. No, mind you, it's expensive. No doubt it is expensive. A fleeting are the glutton joys. With fish and fowl, he lightly toys. And pays for such expensive tricks sometimes as much as two and six. As two and six. As two and six. Sometimes as much as two. My detective's report. Oh, what's this? Another conspiracy. <laughs> oh, a conspiracy to depose me. <laughs> I, 
And my private detective was so convulsed with laughter at the notion of the conspirator selecting him for a confidant, he was physically incapable of arresting the malefactor. Why, it'll come off. This comes of engaging a private detective with a keen sense of the ridiculous. For the future, I'll employ none but Scotchmen. <laughs> and, and the plot is to explode tomorrow. My wedding day. Oh, Caroline, Caroline, this, this is perfectly frightful. Uh, what, what, what's to do? I, 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 I don't know. I ought to keep calm and think. Oh, but you can't think when your veins are full of hot soda water and your brain's fizzing like a firework and all your faculties are jumbled in a perfect whirlpool of publication. And I'm going to be ill. I know I am. I've been living too low and I'm going to be very ill indeed. Oh. <laughs> when you find you're a broken down critter who is all of a tremble and twitter with a palate unpleasantly bitter as if you just bitten a pill when your legs are as thin as dividers and you're plagued with unruly insiders and your spine is all tingly with spiders and you're highly gambogenical. When you've got a beehive in your head and a sewing machine in your chair and you feel that you've eaten your bed and you've got a bad headache, a headache down here. When such facts are about and those symptoms you find in your body or crown. It's a shady look out, you may make up your mind that you better lie down. Go at once, go at once and lie down. When your lips are all smeary like tallow, and your tongue is decidedly yellow with a pint of warm oil in your swallow and a pound of tin tacks in your head when you're down in the mouth with the vapors and all over your modest wallpapers like beetles are cutting their capers and crawly things never address crawly things Doubt that your head is your own, and you jump when an open door slams. <laughs> then you've got to a state, to a state which is known to the medical world as Jim Jams. When those symptoms you find in your body or head, they're not easy to quell. You may make up your mind you are better in bed, but you're not at all well. No, you're not at all well, not at all. Dancing duets in the marketplace, but I don't see him. Oh. Hello, who's this? <coughs> Why, it is the Grand Duke. <coughs> oh, who are you, sir, who presume to address me directly? 
If you have anything to communicate, you must fling yourself at the feet of my acting temporary sub-deputy assistant vice-chamberlain, who will fling himself at the feet of his immediate superior, and so on, through the successive grades with various foot flinging. Your communication will, in course of time, come to my august knowledge. But when I inform your highness that in me you see the most unhappy, the most unfortunate, the most completely miserable man in your whole dominion. You, the most miserable man in my whole dominion. How can you have the face to stand there and say such a thing? I mean, look at me, look at me. <laughs> well, I wouldn't be a crybaby. Crybaby? I mean, if you just found out you were going to be deposed tomorrow and uh, perhaps blown up with dynamite for all I know. Wouldn't you be a crybaby? I do declare if I could hit upon some cheap and painless way of putting an end to an existence which has become insupportable, I would unhesitatingly adopt it. You would? I see a magnificent way out of this. By Jupiter, I'll try it. Are you, by any chance, in earnest? In, in earnest? Why, look at me. If you are really in earnest, if you really desire to escape scot-free from this impending, this unspeakably horrible catastrophe without trouble, danger, pain, or expense, why not resort to a statutory duel? A statutory duel? Yes. Well, the act is still in force, but it will expire tomorrow afternoon. You fight, you lose, you are dead for a day. Tomorrow, when the act expires, you will resume your Grand Duchy as though nothing has happened. In the meantime, the explosion will have taken place and your survivor will have had to bear the brunt of it. Yes, well, that's all very well, but who would be fool enough to be the survivor? Actuated by an overwhelming sense of attachment to your Grand Ducal person, I unhesitatingly offer myself as the victim of your subject's fury. You do? Well, really, uh, that's very handsome. I dare say being blown up isn't nearly as unpleasant as one might oh, think. Oh, yes, it is. It mixes one up awfully. Oh, well, well, su suppose I were to win. Oh, that's easily arranged. <laughs> I'll put an ace up my sleeve. You'll put a king up yours. When the drawing takes place, I shall seem to have drawn the higher card, and you the lower. And there you are. But that's cheating. So it is. I never thought of that. Oh, not that I mind. Uh, I say, uh, you won't go taking advantage of your day of office, will you? I mean, you won't go tipping people or squandering my little savings on fireworks or any nonsense of that sort. I am hurt. Really hurt by that suggestion. You, you wouldn't like to put down a deposit. No, I don't think I should like to put down a deposit. Or give a guarantee. A guarantee would be equally open to objection. Well, it would be more regular. Oh, you know, very well, I suppose. You must have your own way. Good. I say, hmm? we must have um, a devil of a quarrel. Oh, devil of a quarrel. And, and just to add colour to the thing, shall I uh, give you a sound thrashing before the people? Just say the word. It's no trouble. No, I think not. Uh, although it would be very convincing and it's very kind and good of you to suggest it, but still, a uh, devil of a quarrel. Oh, a devil of a quarrel. No half measures, <laughs> no, no, big words, Ooh. strong language, <laughs> rude remarks, Ooh. or a devil of a quarrel. <laughs> now the question is, how shall we summon the people? Oh, that's no problem. Bless you, they've been staring at us through those windows for the last half hour. <laughs> Men will shiver in their shoes, and they'll all grind your defenders when they learn the facts tremendous. That to give his man his cruel in a statutory duel, this would be a man of shoddy, this contemptible nobody, your grand duke does not refuse. Retreat. There is no retreat. We 
shall certainly be Now you begin and pitch it strong. Walk into me abusively. I said wrong that, but that's the type reserved for you exclusively. A choice selection I have here when you are ready to begin. No, you 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 begin. As we expected, is a little more detective. <laughs> Tomorrow. Yes, yes, I come to life tomorrow. 
hands in penitential fires. You rue the ribaldry that from you falls. Tomorrow afternoon the Lord expires, and then look out for squalls. <laughs> Jingo, I'll do it, it's done. Till I perish, your monarch and mine, your monarch and mine, your monarch and mine. Your monarch, your monarch, your monarch, your monarch is he. Oh, I do not pretend to be very prophetic. I fancy I know what you're going to say by a pushing young monarch of turn energetic. A very great deal may be done in a day. The court appointments will be given out to each and all, for that was a condition according to professional position. Hurrah! Hurrah! What's the matter? According to professional position. According to professional position. Then Some new 
I do not start. The canons of dramatic art decree that this repulsive part, the Grand Duke's wife, is mine. <laughs> Can this be so? I do not know, but time will show if this be so. Time will show if this be so. she go? What will she do? That isn't in your part, you know. Quite true. <laughs> Depressing topics we'll not touch upon. Let us begin as we are going on. Oh, this will be a jolly court for little and for big. We made a jolly day so many I shall be as merry as a Greek. Say, play the jolly days of many, not many. All state and ceremony will eternally abolish me. Don't be to insist upon unnecessary polish, but on the whole, I rather think you'll find out what I'll do. Say, play the jolly days of many, not many. The jolly, jolly jinx. The jolly, jolly jinx. The jolly, jolly jinx. The jolly, jolly jinx. Oh, that's a 
Strings touches. Allow me to present your new grand duchess. Should she offend, you'll graciously excuse her and kindly recollect I didn't choose her. <laughs> And 
At the outset, I may mention it's my sovereign intention to revive the classic memories of Athens at its best. For the company possesses all the necessary dresses and the course of quiet cramming with suppliers with the rest. We're a choir, I folk, a magic, which is ballet operatic, who respond to the corrupti of their cultivated age. And our clever chorus master, all but captious critic, caster, would accept as the corusi of that early attic stage. This return to classic ages is conceded in their wages, which are always calculated by the day and by the week. And I'll pay a bit they'll back me all in Hobanoi and track me, which they'll get if they prefer it at the Calends that a Greek. At this juncture, I may mention that this erudition sham is but classical pretension, the result of steady grand. There are plastic methods burning to this audience discerning. I admit this course of learning is the fruit of steady grand. In the period Socratic, every dining room was attic, which suggests an architecture of a topsy-turvy kind. There they'd satisfy that twist on a recherche called a wrist, on which is what they call their lunch, and so may you if you're inclined. As they gradually got on a tray pest, I crossed and brought in, which is attic or a steady and a conscientious drink. But they mix their wine with water, which I'm sure they didn't water, and we modern Saxons know a trick were two of that, I think. Then came rather risky dances under certain circumstances, which would shock that worthy gentleman, the licenser of plays. Corbantian maniac, kick Dionysiac, go back, kick all the dither and big rebels of those under chorus days. And perhaps I'd better mention, lest alarming you, I am, that it isn't our intention to perform a dithyram. It displays a lot of stocking, which is always very shocking, and of course I'm only mocking at the prevalence of cramp. It displays a lot of stocking, which is always very shocking, and of course it's only mocking at the prevalence of cramp. Yes, on reconsideration, there are customs of that nation which are not in strict accordance with the habits of our day. And when I come to codify their rules, I mean to modify, or Mrs. Grundy perhaps may have a word or two to say. For they hadn't Macintoshes or umbrellas or galoshes, and a shower with their dresses must have played the very juice. And it must have been unpleasing when they caught a fit of sneezing, for it seems of pocket handkerchiefs they didn't know the use. They wore little underclothing, scarcely anything or nothing, and their dress of Cohen silk was quite transparent in design. Well, in fact, in summer weather, something like the altogether, and it's there I rather fancy I shall have to draw the line. And again, I like to mention that this erudition sham is but classical pretension, the result of steady cram. It's my classic law aggressive, if your pardon not possessive, is exceedingly impressive when you're passing an exam. Yes, it's classic law aggressive, if your pardon not possessive, is exceedingly impressive when you're passing an exam.
once an obscure comedian whom the law backs to sovereign rank is promptly elevated. He takes it with its incidental drawbacks. Oh, Julia and I are duly mated. Take care of him. He's much too good to live. With him you must be very gentle. You'll often have a few words with your newborn husband. <laughs> well, what is it? Why, I have been thinking that as you and I have to play our parts for life, it is most essential that we should come to a definite understanding as to how they shall be rendered. Now, I have been considering how I can make the most of the Grand Duchess. Have you? <laughs> well, if you'll take my advice, you'll make a very fine part of it. Bye, that's back to my idea. <laughs> I wouldn't make her one of your toity toity fixinish viragos. You think not? Oh, I'm quite clear about that. I, I should make her a tender, gentle, submissive, affectionate, but not too affectionate, <laughs> child wife, timidly anxious to coil herself into her husband's heart, but kept in check by an awestruck reverence for his exalted intellectual qualities and his majestic personal appearance. Oh, that is your 
Mighty of a good part? Yes. A wife who regards her husband's slightest wish as an inflexible law and who ventures but rarely into his august presence, unless, which would happen seldom, he should summon her to appear before him. <gasps> a crushed, despairing violet whose blighted existence would culminate all too soon in a lonely <gasps> and pathetic <gasps> death scene. <laughs> a fine part, my dear. A good deal to be said for your view of it. <laughs> now, there are some actresses whom it would fit like a glove. I wish I'd married one of them. But you see, I must consider my temperament. For instance, my temperament would demand some strong scenes of justifiable jealousy. Oh, there's no difficulty about that. You shall have them. With a lovely but detested rival. Oh, I'll provide the rival. Whom I should stab. Stab! Stab! I wouldn't stab her. It's been done to death. I would treat her with a silent, contemptuous disdain and delicately withdraw from a position which, to one of your sensitive nature, would be absolutely untenable. Dear me, I can see you delicately withdrawing up centre and off. <laughs> can you? Yes. It's a fine situation, and in your hands, full of quiet pathos. Now, Julia, come consider it from this dainty point of view. A timid, tender, feminine gender prompt to coyly coo. Yet silent seeking, seldom speaking till she's spoken to. Ah, comfy, cozy, rosy, posy, innocent, ingenue. The part you're suited to, to give the deuce its due. Oh, sweet, oh, Jiminy, Miminy, Bimini, innocent, haunt your new. I'm much obliged to you, I don't think such would do. Oh, sweet, oh, Jiminy, Miminy, Bimini, innocent, haunt your new. You forget my special magic in a high dramatic sense. Lies in situations tragic, undeniably intense. As I justify promotion in the histrionic art, I'll submit to you my notion for the first red part. Well, let us see your notion of the first red part. I have a rival, frenzy thrilled. I find you both together. This horrid shield, hard as the millstone dares her. Then softly, slyly, snaily, snaky, crawly, creepy, cabaily, cabaky, I trick her on her homeward way. As cancer tracks her fated prey, I fly at her soft white throat, the lily white laughing leman. <laughs> On her agonized gaze, I gloat with the glee of a dancing demon. <laughs> My rival, she, I have no doubt of her. So I hold on till the breath is out of her. Till the breath is out of her! <laughs> and then, remorse, remorse, oh, cold and pleasant course, avaunt, avaunt. That lifeless form I gaze upon, that face still warm, but feebly worn. Those eyes of glass I contemplate, and then, alas, too late, too late, I find she is your aunt. <laughs> <laughs> then mad, 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 this fancy's wild chimerical, now sorrowful, silent, sad, oh. now hullabaloo hysterical. <laughs>
past eleven. Bless me, how very sudden. Yes, it was sudden. But what in the world am I going to do? I was to have been married to him today. For any disappointment, we are sorry unaffectedly. But yesterday, the noble man is quite unexpectedly. Tell the riddle, tell the riddle, tell the riddle. Well, it's a delicate combination of both events. Uh, it is intended to express inconsolable grief for the decease of the late Duke and ebullient joy at the accession of his successor. <laughs> I am his successor. <laughs> oh, oh. Permit me to present to you my Grand Duchess. Oh, your Grand Duchess. Oh, your Highness. Old Frank. <laughs> a recent creation, probably. Uh, we were married only half an hour ago. <laughs> exactly. I thought she seemed new to the position. <laughs> <laughs> Ma'am, I don't know who you are, but I flatter myself I can do justice to any part on the very shortest notice. Oh, my dear, under the circumstances, you were doing admirably. And you'll improve with practice. It's so difficult to be a lady when one isn't born to it. <laughs> oh, am I to stand this? Oh, am I not allowed to pull out a piece? No, no, it isn't Greek. Be a violet, I beg. Oh, no. oh, tell me all about this distressing circumstance. How did the Grand Duke die? Oh, he uh, perished, nobly, in a statutory duel. It is statutory duel, but that's only a civil death, and the act expires tonight, and then you'll come to life again. Well, no. Uh, anxious to inaugurate my reign by conferring some inestimable boon on my people, I signalise this occasion by reviving the law for another hundred years! Yay! Am I to understand that you, having taken upon yourself all Rudolph's responsibilities, We'll now occupy the Grand Ducal Throne for the ensuing century. If I should live so long. Set <laughs> <laughs> the merry joy bells ringing. Let festive epithemalia resound through these ancient hallways. Cut the satisfying sandwich. Broach the exhilarating masala. And let us rejoice today if we never rejoice again. But I don't think I quite understand. We have already rejoiced a good deal. <laughs> Happy man. You little wreck of the extent of the good things you are in for. When you killed Rudolph, you adopted all his overwhelming responsibilities. Know then that I, Caroline von Krakenfeldt, am the most overwhelming of them all. But <laughs> stop. Stop! I have just been married to somebody else! Yes, ma'am! To somebody else, ma'am! Do you understand, ma'am? To somebody else! Do keep this young woman quiet. She fidgets me. Oh, fidgets you? Ah, oh. da, da, da. Be a violet! A crushed, despairing violet! Don't you suppose I intend to give a 
a magnificent part of us all to struggle. Look, my dear girl, she has the law on her side. Let us both bear this calamity with resignation. If you must struggle, go away and struggle in the seclusion of your chamber. What? Now away to the wedding we go, so then summon the charioteers. No kind of reluctance we show to embark on our married careers. The two his emotions may glow in the form of impetuous tears. To our wedding we eagerly go, so summon, so summon the charioteers. To our wedding we eagerly go, so summon, so summon the
any longer. Oh, at any risk, I must gratify my urgent desire to know what's going on. Why, what's this? Surely I see a wedding procession winding down the hill, dressed in my Troilus and Tressida costumes. Oh, that's Ludwig's doing. I see how it is. He found the time hang heavy on his hands, and he's amusing himself by getting married to Lisa. Oh, no, it can't be Lisa, for here she is. I really cannot stand seeing my Ludwig married twice in one day to somebody else. Oh, uh, Lisa, uh, come here. Don't be a little fool, I want you. <coughs> Why, what's the matter with the little donkey? One would think she saw a ghost. But if he's not marrying Lisa, whom is he marrying? Julia! Oh, I see it all. The scoundrel. He had to adopt all my responsibilities, and he's shabbily taking advantage of the situation by marrying the girl I'm engaged to. Oh, no, it can't be to Julia, for here she is. I have made up my mind. Oh, I won't stand it. I'll send in my notice at once. Julia, oh, what a relief. Then you've not married Ludwig. You're still true to me. Oh, oh don't run away. Listen to me. Oh, are you all crazy? What would you miss me, Spectre? Oh, ain't his eyes sepulchral? <laughs> and ain't his voice hollow? Oh, what are you doing out of your tomb at this time of day? Oh, ah, I, sure. I do wish I could make you girls understand that I'm only technically dead. Well, and that physically I'm as much alive as I ever was in my life. Oh, but it's an awful thing to be haunted by a technical bogey. Oh. Well, you won't be haunted much longer. Why, the law must be on its last legs. And in a couple of hours, I should come to life again, resume all my social and civil functions, and claim my darling as my blushing bride. Oh! Then you haven't heard. My love, I've heard nothing. <laughs> How could I? Uh, there are no daily papers where I come from. Why, Ludwig challenged Rudolf and Vaughn, and now he's Grand Duke, and he's revived the law for another century. What? <laughs> but you're not serious. <laughs> you're only joking. <laughs> Light-hearted girl, but I don't chaff bogies. Why? That's the meanest dodge I ever heard of. Shabby trick, I call it. But you don't mean to say you're going to cry off. I really can't afford to wait until your time is up. Oh. You know, I've always set my face against long engagements. <laughs> then defy the law and marry me now. Oh, we'll fly to your native country, and I'll play broken English in London as you play broken German here. These legal technicalities cannot be defied. Well, situated as you are, you have no power to make me your wife. At best, you can only make me your widow. <laughs> then be my widow. Oh, my little dainty winning winsome widow. <laughs> now what would be the good of that? Why, you fools. I should marry again within a month. of love's lingering ember has faded in gloom. You cannot neglect or remember a voice from the tomb. That stern supernatural diction should act as a solemn restriction, although by a mere legal fiction, a voice from the tomb. A voice from the tomb. I own that that utterance chills me, yet it feels my belong. Hey, for this. 
Fatality. This is the shop for cut and dried formality. Let him appear. He'll find that we're remarkable for cut and dried formality. <laughs> I have a plan. I'll tell you all the plot of it. If he wants formality, we shall have a lot of it. Conceal yourselves and when I get the cue, spring out on them. <laughs> you know what to do. Magnificent array, our own clothes are much gloomier in costumes which we find by the day. From a very well known costumier, I am the very well known costumier. Oh, 
Last, just in time to compel Duke Rudolph to fulfill the terms of his marriage contract. Another hour and we should have been too late. Oh, yes, Papa. And if you had unfortunately discovered a means of making an income by earnest industry, oh, we should never have got here at all. Very true. Confined within the precincts of my palace for the last two years, by an obdurate bootmaker who held a warrant for my arrest. I devoted my enforced leisure to a study of the doctrine of chances, mainly with a view to ascertaining whether there was the remotest chance of my ever going out for a walk again. And oh, this led to the discovery of a singularly fascinating little round game, which I have called Roulette, and by which, in one sitting, I won no less than 5,000 francs. My first act was to pay my bootmaker. My second, to engage a good, useful working set of second hand nobles. And my third was to hurry you off to Fennig half Fennig as fast as a Tandalus could carry us. Yes, and a pretty job. Lot of second hand novels you've striped together. Pretty, you think? <laughs> I don't know, my love. Dolol, I should say. Dolol. They are not only satisfactory, there is a, a certain air of unreality about them. No, they are not convincing. <laughs> But, my good friend, what can you expect for 18 pence a day? Well, take the spear, for instance. What the deuce do you call him? Him? Oh, he's a spow. He's the Duke of Riviera. <laughs> so he's a Duke, is he? Well, that's the reason why he should look so confoundedly haughty. <laughs> Be affable, sir. That's better. <laughs> Now, is a nobleman's coat all in alls? What a careless chap you are. Why don't you take care of the clothes? These cost money, they do. Do you think I stole him? It's not the poor devil's fault, it's yours. I don't wish you to end our house of pills, but you might at least mend them. <laughs> oh! Who's this? with his moustache coming off. <laughs> Bye, you I can't mental, ain't you? Bless the boy, I know. It's right here somewhere. Yes, by Count Montone. Then why don't you say so? Hold yourself up. You're not carrying some with faults now. Oh, maybe be permitted to hint to the noble Viscount in the most delicate manner imaginable that it is not the practice among the higher nobility to carry their handkerchiefs in their hats. I ain't got no pockets. Then tuck it in here. Now what for all you peers? When His Highness arrives, don't just stand like sticks. 
but to let appear to take a, an intelligent and sympathetic interest in what is going on. You needn't say anything, but let your gestures be in accordance with the spirit of the conversation. Now, take a word from me. Affability. <laughs> Submission. Shame. Surprise. Grief. Joy. That's better. You can do it if you like. But, 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 where in the world is the quarter? There is positively no one here to receive us. Well, my dear, you must remember that we have taken Duke Rudolph somewhat by surprise. <laughs> These small German potentates are famous for their scrupulous adherence to ceremonial observances. And it may be that the etiquette of this court demands that we be received with a certain uh, elaboration of, of uh, pomp, uh, which, uh, which Duke Rudolph may at this moment be preparing. I can't help feeling that he wants to get out of it. First of all, you implore him to come to Monte Carlo and Marie be there, and he refused on account of the expense. Then you implore him to advance us the money to enable us to come to him. And again he refused on account of the expense. Reason why they only let the rat, that's what he is. Oh, I shouldn't go so far to say that. Uh, I, I should rather describe him as uh, an enthusiastic collector of coins <laughs> of the realm. And we mustn't be too hard upon a new Miss Baptiste if he shows a certain disinclination to part with some of his really very valuable specimens. <coughs> it's a pretty hobby. I often thought I should like to collect some coins myself. Papa, I'm sure there's someone behind the curtain. I saw it move! Then no doubt they are coming. Now, mind you, peers, all the affability combined with a sense of what is due to your exalted rank. <laughs> Oh, I find you half a Frankish. Upon my soul, I agree. reception of visitors of the very highest distinction. Oh, very quaint, very curious indeed. Uh, prettily footed, too, prettily footed. Would you like to see how we say goodbye to visitors of distinction? Uh, that ceremony is also performed with the foot. Read this stone. But perhaps you have not grasped fully the situation. Not altogether. Ah, then I shall give you a lead over. I am the father of the princess of Monte Carlo. Does that convey any idea to the grand ducal mind? Nothing definite. Oh, very odd. Never mind, try again. This is the daughter of the prince of Monte Carlo. Do you take? Eh? 
Not yet. Go on, don't give it up. I dare say it will come. Presently. Very odd. Never mind. Try again. Twenty years ago. Little doddle doddle. Two little doddle doddle. Happy father, earth, and yours. A proud mother, yours and earth. Ah. <laughs> now you take. I see you do, I see you do. <laughs> Nothing is more annoying than to feel you're not equal to the intellectual pressure of the conversation. You I do wish he'd say something intelligible. You did not expect me? No. I see. No! Oh! Oh, I get that. Oh, thank you very much. No, I did not expect you. <laughs> I thought not. <laughs> At the last, I have escaped from my enforced restraint. No, 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 no. You misunderstand me. I mean, I have paid my debts. And how do you think I did it? Through the medium of roulette. Roulette? Now you're getting obscure again. The lucid interval has expired. I'll explain. It's an invention of my own, the simplest thing in the world. And what is most remarkable, it comes just in time to fulfill a long and deep-fed world. i tell you all about it. Take my advice when taking it, set up a bank a pay wallet. At once distrust you surely, the man who simply it and the girl. The man must take his everything in wild attempt to break the bank. Much mistake your life and then the bank will end by breaking them. Allons a call, cash of it, for we know how the challenge. Hola, 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 hola. For every time the boat you spin, the bank is the home to win. For every time the boat you spin, the bank is the Who's a little balls a true coquette? A million coins who numbers who and six and thirty sold to so for all complexions to good luck for some are red and some are black and some are sweet extreme for half of them are not nineteen. Allons encore a gas of the end of the end of the end. Hola, 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 hola. Oh, Papa! He's got a Grand Duchess! Ah, 
Grand Duchess, my good girl, I've got three Grand Duchesses. Three Grand Duchesses? Oh, but let us understand each other. Am I not addressing the Grand Duke order? Not at all. You're addressing another guest sort of Grand Duke altogether. <laughs> this comes of not asking the way. With the stick and the turning, I'm going into the wrong Grand Duchy. But may we know where we are? Who the deuce is this gentleman? He's the gentleman I married yesterday. He's the gentleman I married this morning. He's the gentleman I married this afternoon. Oh, well, I'm sure. Papa, let's go away. This is not our respectable court. All these grand dukes have their little fancies, my love. This potentate appears to be collecting wives. <laughs> it's a pretty hobby. I'd like to collect a few myself. <laughs> This is a charming specimen. An antique, I should say. <laughs> of the early Merovingian period, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> oh, and another one, a Scotch lady, I think. Uh, and a little one thrown in. Two half quartons and a McWaite. Uh, do you have such a thing as a catalogue of the museum? <laughs> but I cannot permit Rudolph to keep a museum. Rudolph? Go along with you, I'm not Rudolph. But this is getting serious. If this is not Rudolph, the question is where in the world is he? Uh, no, the question is where out of the world is he? And that's a very curious question too. What, what do, do you mean? mean? Uh, well, the Grand Duke Rudolph died yesterday. What? what? Uh, quite suddenly, of, um, of a, um, uh, a cardiac affection. Of, of a cardiac, cardiac affection? <laughs> yes, yes, a, um, uh, a pack of cardiac affection. <laughs> he fought a statutory duel with me and lost, and I took over all his engagements, including this imperfectly preserved old lady <laughs> to whom he has been engaged for the last three weeks. Three weeks? It's all right, my love, they can't get over that. Uh, he's yours. Take him and hold him as tight as you can. My own! Oh, there's another! Oh, the fourth in four and twenty hours. Would anybody else like to marry me? Would you, man? Would you? You? Anybody? I'm getting used to it. Oh, my God! Oh, is he telling you that? Okay. 
said with deeds which drive me mad as hat or oh. This flippity jibbity kind of a liberty scarcely seems to matter at all. Not even this can break the fates that drive me mad. Bond, you font of idle chatter, oh, you've done a deed on which I vow you'll not get any fatter, oh, you fancy you've revived the law, be empty brag and chatter, oh, you can't, you chant, you don't, you won't, you thing of rag and tatter, oh. Agonies like rat in clutch of rat or oh. This liberty jibbity kind of a liberty's quite another matter oh. For this is all the saying I can't revive the law in face of the fact that I have revived it. You didn't revive it. You couldn't revive it. You, you, you're an imposter, sir. A tuppany rogue, sir. You never were and in all human probability never will be Grand Duke of Fenwick anything. What? Never, never, never. <laughs> oh, my internal economy. <laughs> That's absurd, you know. I fought the Grand Duke. He drew a king. I drew an ace. He perished in inconceivable agonies on the spot. Now, is that settled? We'll go on with the wedding. It isn't settled. You, you, I, oh, tell him, tell him I can't. The fact is, there's been a little mistake here. On reference to the law that regulates statutory duels, I find it expressly laid down that the ace shall count invariably as lowest. As lowest? As lowest, lowest, lowest. So you're the goest, goest, goest. <laughs> Oh, what's the matter with the inside? Well, Julia, as it seems that the law hasn't been revived, and, well, uh, consequently, I shall come to life again in three minutes. Oh, my objection falls to the ground. Oh. Very well. Oh. But will you promise to give me some strong scenes of justifiable jealousy? Justifiable jealousy? Oh, my love, I couldn't do it. Then I won't play. Oh, well, uh, I'll do my best. Oh. <laughs> and am I to understand... All this time, I've been a dead man without knowing it. And that I married a dead man without knowing it. And since I was on the point of marrying a dead man without knowing it. Oh, oh my love. Oh, what a narrow escape I've had. Oh, oh, you're the Princess of Monte Carlo, eh? And you've arrived just in time. Oh, you're a pretty little girl, but you're as poor as a rat. Ah, pardonne-moi, sir, you mistake. Accept her dowry with her father's blessing. What do you call that? It's my little bit of fortune. I'll tell you all about it. That's all very well, but what's to become of me? If you're a dead man... <laughs> but I'm not! Time's up! The axe expired! I've come to life! The parson is still in attendance! And we'll all be married directly! Hooray! Hooray!